welcome to a new Harry's Garage and today's car is the Jagger V12 XJC that you see behind me. 1978 car. I did a video on this car about two years ago. I've owned it that long and I hinted that I was going to do some improvements to it. Couldn't get over how popular the video was. It got over 300,000 views. And I'm pleased to say I finally got round to getting it all the things I mentioned in that video modded. So it's got new suspension, new exhaust, diff, all sorts of stuff. Went down to XJ Restorations, they're in Eastbourne, Keith Parrington down there. He runs the XJ Register for the Jaguar Club and he knows everything about these cars and how to make them fast road cars and race cars. So it was the perfect place to go. And now I'll just give you a tour around and I'll show you what we've done to it. Okay, where well the main difference you can see immediately is it's lowered. Uh, XJ uh, Restorations do a, a suspension kit that involves, it's got um, six shockers, there's four shockers on the back of uh, one of these cars, and two at the front, and lower IBAC springs, gas dampers, adjustable dampers, um, the stiffer bushes for the steering rack and the front suspension. Um, a dramatic change to all the suspension uh, and it really does make a di huge difference and the starts, I just love the starts of it with its sort of lower set purposeful look. The big difference obviously is there's more damping to be had, I mean it's st slightly stiffer springs as well but yeah that's that's the difference. This is on the dampers have settings of um, 22. This is on four, um, so it could go a lot stiffer. Just want to come round to the back. It's same. It's same here. You can see how much tighter it is on the tyre here. And at the back, it's it still has suspension, but it's a lot stiffer than what it was before. Other mods were the exhaust, you'll hear in a moment, with the difference that made. And then we changed the rear diff because it had intergalactic gearing, this car. It was um, 50 miles an hour, it was about 1400 revs in top. I wanted this car to really accelerate. I didn't, it wasn't made for a fuel economy in the, anywhere. It's just to have a bit of a ball. So we swapped the 288 diff out for a 354, which is about a 30% reduction. So what this car is all about now is how it drives. So let's go and do that. Yeah, one thing we haven't managed to cure is the sound of the baked bean can as you get in. Um, Keith said it was actually because whoever um, put the headlining back in didn't put the foam. So the vinyl roof is off and there's no foam, so I'm afraid I have to live with a tin can. But I've got other noises that uh, I can enjoy in this car. Immediately you start it up, you sort of notice there's a difference. Just a little bit about the car in here. You don't get normally a Momo wheel. I really love this wheel. It is period 1970s Momo wheel, um, which is really nice. And obviously the manual gearbox. The whole car is a, it's a little scabby, shall we say. Um, but then it was only a, a £5,000 car in the first place. So um, we can forgive it that. What is, I've still, since I bought it, I'm yet to see another manual one up for sale. But anyway, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go off usual route, and uh, next time you join, I'm going to exactly the same road as I used on the original test with this car, and hopefully put the bits of video side by side, and you can spot the difference, see if you can spot the difference what the chassis mods have done. So yeah, join me in a minute when we're on a proper bit of road, and really get to see what this car's all about now. So the first thing you notice, I've noticed since having it done, is the gearing. Suddenly I'm using many more gears. I mean, it was a joke before. I think third would take you to about 120, 130 miles an hour. It was ridiculous. But now, yeah, I'm just going through a 30 zone um, and I'm in fourth and uh, I don't know how many revs have we got. Um, uh, 1,600 revs. But I just want to... Uh, you to join me on this bit because a little squirt uphill squirt here and uh, I'll give you the first taste of what this engine sounds like with its improved exhaust. All we've actually done, we've only, uh, we haven't completely changed the system. Uh, the previous system had straight through pipes at the back and there was, a, um, there was two boxes at the back, one right at the back and a sort of inline one. We've just taken the inline one out but what has it made a difference? Right, as you'll get to hear now. Mix. It's quite a lot of 
of induction noise but it's just overlaid with exhaust sound actually from the outside it's quite noisy uh, but it's a good noise it really is whoa what's that it's very definitely v12 well, i say it's very definitely it's it's two separate six um, cylinder sounds bolted together but uber smooth turbine smooth yeah one of the things you can probably pick up now uh, wind noise there's always an issue with wind noise with uh, XJC unfortunately they never quite got the windows to seal perfectly uh, so William Lyon wanted this frameless window look and the downside of it is it's quite a windy day today as well uh, downside is you do get a fair bit of wind noise which doesn't really matter because you have to say you've got other things to, to listen to what else um, the other weird thing and I mentioned it in the previous video you saw where you sit in the car you always think in a sort of road, low roof line etc you sit quite high in the car but actually you sit quite low the seats sort of give I and mean, they've all been reupholstered but when you get into the seat you sort of sink down in it a bit like you're doing a sort of comfy chair at home so I can I, I sit much lower than expected huge amount of headroom um, and that sort of gives it a different sort of character now I want to take you down here so you get a little sense of what suddenly the slot's gone and I've got this great noise listen to it how you know it's so different the character of this car I just chuck it into corners had all new brake calipers at the rear as well because um, I very definitely needed good brakes in this car we put uh, yellow stuff um, pads in the front that made quite a difference but it's just there isn't that slot that was before it's tightly damped yes it rides lower but it rides absolutely fine I'm not thinking I've got a harsh ride at all I've just got this bit of a weapon of a Jaguar It's a very cold day today, it's about three degrees uh, and it's, so it's a little slippery under the trees so we can't go to bananas. So everything is stiffened up. The only criticism I have slightly is the steering is a little bit vague uh, compared to the very best um, steering out there but it's chalk and cheese to what a standard Jaguar um, is of this era. I think it's one of the, the worst aspects of a 70s Jag is it's steering normally it's just over light there's nothing really coming through the wheel this here it's a, there's, it's a bit um, there's a bit more feel coming in it's not uh, quite as light as it was before this wheel helps as well being a slightly thicker rim um, but even with the super stiff bushes there isn't quite the information I'd like to come through the wheel but I'm also on now this is a big compression in here no didn't touch at all round we go yeah just and the other thing is how it revs up oh, it's a shame it's damp round here it's one of my favorite corners but yeah i can't push it too hard today um, it is so unlike a jaguar a 70s jaguar this car unbelievable the change coming down here and this is where the switchbacks are where we, we really ground out last on the last video here don't expect it a lot of mud on the road now so definitely not going to press on look at that took off there landed absolutely perfectly what happens on these ones this is the big dipper just coming up now over we go through the compression no completely compressed didn't touch that's what i'm really impressed with with this uh, suspension setup it's very sorted it isn't just lowered and stiff and damped and get on with it and it's um, crashing onto its bump stops or anything like that it can compress but it doesn't touch anything underneath yeah, it's quite slippery out here today it's these damn farmers putting mud on the road I never do that with my tractors. But look at it, look at it go down here. I just can't believe the difference. It's just 
just as I wanted this car to be. That's what I'm so chuffed about. So what, what's it actually done then, this conversion? Well, what it, I think, is done is release this fantastic V12. It's finally, I get, God, that's, God, God that's icy around there. Yeah, finally, I've released the potential of the V12 in the XJC. Always knew it was lying under there, but normally it's hidden under, you know, sloppy suspension and the uh, um, three-speed automatic. Now I've got a proper manual gear change. I've got a super light flywheel, just revs, soars up the revs. And it's just a completely different car. It's a Jaguar that I wanted to, to live with. It's a bit scruffy. The total cost of the conversion was about 4,700. So I've got a 10,000 pound hot rod Jaguar coupe that I'm very happy with. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and this little insight into what this car, we've unlocked the potential of it. If you have enjoyed the video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.